what you said was that uh, when suppose we break a precept or do something and then we uh, learn to forgive ourselves so you don't end up feeling very guilty when you say this is not who i am this is not mine this is not who i am this is not myself um doesn't that make you complacent yeah. in the sense you know you make mistakes and then you just keep forgiving yourself no 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 when no because um this is a let's go let's go in the board for just a minute So, you know, this is this is the deal of the unwholesome, okay? The unwholesome and the wholesome. And then here, these are the these are the precepts. You know, the precepts are here. And they try to keep a ba a balanced barrier here, okay? And you want you have to test this for yourself when you start testing this. You know, this is a W. <laughs> when you start testing this, that's what the the um, that is what the Dwaita Vitaka Sutta is about. Is about he was testing what's it like to just live over here and break the precepts and how does my life go and what happens and that's what this lesson was talking about. If you're dealing with the unwholesome things over here, this is not like um, f a feeling guilty time. This is like operations time. That's the way I look at this whole thing. You know, it's not the normal way that people look at this whole thing, but but we're talking an operative thing when we're talking about the operation of the human being. And, and one of the things is you want to be happy, okay? But happiness is um, a trickster. I call happiness a trickster. You know why? Because happiness is looked at in our society. It is books about how to be happy, get happiness, keep happiness, all that stuff, right? But happiness is a not a product. This is the joke on us. It is a byproduct of the way you live. Happiness happens over here. Happiness happens and happiness can hang around. But I can't go over here and say, I want this. It's in a box. Tell me how much it is. I'd like to purchase it. No, because it's a byproduct of keeping these intact. And you will end up with happiness. The Buddha figured this out. And he said, let's not talk about this. Everybody wants to have happiness, get happiness, control happiness. They want to force happiness on people. No, no. And give you pills to be happy. And then let you break these precepts. This is crazy that this happens. When all you have to do is embrace the moral system here that is just an operative system. He didn't go very far with it. Let's, let's actually be real here. You know, this one down here is an added bonus just so that you don't break these four. He gave you four precepts. That's all. A monk has 300 and some, pre, or one, the nuns have 300 and something like 320 or something like that. And the, and the men 285 or something like that. You know, so when you're talking rules and regulations or anything, bless my heart, this is nothing. <laughs> you know, don't be mean. <laughs> don't hurt anything intentionally. Don't, you know, morally do something that causes his whole structure in these. If you tear the, sit down with a piece of paper and write your five precepts on it. And then under each one, tell me how it uh, works with the human being, you see? Okay, what happens, in other words, um, the, the, the underlying uh, deductive reasoning to the thing is don't do anything that causes pain and suffering to yourself or anyone else. That's the underlying key for this whole thing is that statement right there. Don't do anything that will cause pain and suffering. Okay, pain, two types, physical or mental. That means uh, to yourself or anyone else, fooling around with somebody who's living with their parents is not going to just hurt that person if they don't want to do that, do something with you. It's going to hurt the parents, the grandparents, your parents, their grandparents. If you really love the person, then you're in real trouble because if you get married, you're going to have a miserable life with your in-laws because you broke this apart too soon before you were married. You know, this is, this is a bad deal. This is where I don't believe that you know, cohabitating and everything is such a great idea. 
I mean, I'm from the 60s, but I don't believe that this is the real answer. And it's not about being your individual person, just doing your own thing. I think it's the lack of reasonable respect of looking at how many people get damaged in a situation when you're in doing relationships with people. And that's what the Buddha was looking at. You see, and he wanted to protect you, and sh but not he's not protecting you. You're protecting yourself. You, you work these over here. Operationally, you do your own experiment. Then everything's going to be all right. And this is the bonus, happiness and tranquility and joy. And Buddha's happiness is really nice. It's really, really nice. And come over to the unwholesome. And then you have all the stories of what goes around, comes around. What you put out, you get back do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And some people over here like to say, do unto others before they do it to you <laughs> in, in business. <laughs> That's really nasty. Do unto others before they do it to you. No, come on, live here for a while. Don't listen to me. And then live here for a few days or something and see where it goes. It's not a happy ending, you see? When you're on the unwholesome side, and you're not on the, on the wholesome side, see? One person said, well, what am I supposed to do? And there's a movie where the Germans come to the door, the, the, you know, the bad guys come to the door, and they wanna know if you're hiding the other people. And uh, they were hiding the family in the basement, but they wanted the daughter uh, to, um, to get uh, free, and they had put her out the back door and told her to run across the field they shot her and she died you know but the thing was the question from that film came the man who was trying to be good and wholesome was he supposed to lie at the door and say no they're not here or was he supposed to tell the truth and say that they were there what is he supposed to do is he supposed to tell the truth or is he supposed to lie when you you and i both know that when he came to the door he came to kill everybody in the house and the answer to that precept issue was, no, he's not here, meaning he's not right here in front of your nose. Contact, feeling, craving, clinging, habitual tendency, birth of action, and sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. So here you have um, contact, feeling, Craving, clinging, habitual tendency. Um, whoops, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. Contact, feeling, craving, clinging, habitual tendency. Birth. And then the, um, the last one, the aging and death of the event of the event. Now, suppose the event is anger and the dangerous part for you as a psychologist, okay, a psychiatrist, you know, the danger part of the, of the thing is here. This is where the damage happens. When he bursts out and he's angry, this is the birth of the ang anger, okay? But what happens before that? And if we wanna manage the person's anger, teach him how to manage it, how do we teach him? First, we explain uh, these six sense doors, we can put this one on here too. The six sense doors are here, okay? And then contact happens. So this person, um, you know, he hears somebody. We'll say sound, okay? So this is an ear and the sound and the ear consciousness, and then contact happens. And once contact happens, he has a painful feeling, right? And then I don't like it is the craving kicking in i don't like this and the clinging is why not <laughs> why not is the story about why you don't like it and you hate it and you're angry about it and what is your habitual reaction and we can say this is habitual emotional reaction and that sits right here, your habitual tendency. So this is where your reaction is a uh, reaction library. And these are the, all from the past. They're all from the past events. 
And when this guy gets triggered for his anger, he hears something that is similar from something that happened in the past, sounds similar, the tone sound, the anger sounds, the accent, everything, and immediately trips off what? Restimulation of a reaction. That's what it does. It Restimulation. And here's where it's restimulate. This is the birth, but it's a birth of restimulation reaction. That's what this is. Restimulation reaction. Okay. And then it happens in the other person's face. And then what happens is you have a period of the event, the aging of the event is going on where there's a, a, about a hundred more of these little circles spinning around where the person scream back and they go back and forth and now they're at war and finally it tones down. And then after the aging and death of the event, then there is this sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. See that? Okay, now how are we going to heal this person? Are we going to go back here and say, but if this doesn't happen, that doesn't happen, da 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 da? No. When I learned, I asked them to explain to me in New York, the man who used to be so angry at those people who harassed him and his wife on the street when they took a walk and they'd come in a van and they'd harass him. Okay, what happened to you? How did you heal? He said it was the craziest thing. I decided. I kept going over this chart again and again and again, like I did when I learned it again and again and again, drilling myself until one day he's out there and he sent loving kindness to them instead of getting angry when they started cussing at him. And he just wished them happiness and they drove away upset because he wasn't upset is what happened, okay? So how did it happen, I said? Well, he said, I said, I kept track in the little book and I saw that every single time it happens, it happens exactly the same way. Somebody says something and there's the contact, the painful feeling. I don't like it. I don't like it because it's like all the other things in the past, blah, 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 blah. You know, all the past, past memories. Okay. And then all the things I did when those things happened, those are living here in my reaction library. And I always did it the same way every single time I got mad at them. I was like a, a record just doing it, caught in a loop, doing it again and again. I decided this. I decided no more am I going to say it back to them. That was the first thing I did. Then the second thing is I, before I decided to do that, I wanted to close my library, just close my library. I closed it. So now I don't have a library to draw a reaction out of anymore, he said. So now when they say it to me and I hear it and a painful feeling comes up and I don't like it, well, I might not be able to stop that one, but I can sure stop running the story anymore. Because I know it's all coming from these old things that happened before. So I closed down this, I closed down this, I closed down this. He gave it to me in an email. He said, I only had to deal with I don't and I could probably let go of it. <laughs> I didn't have to say I don't like it. I, I was got, I, oh, I, I let go. And most of the time now, and he's not attaining attainments, he's curing himself. But how did he do this? Are you getting it? How did he do it? Okay, he did it in the other direction, this direction. He did it like that, going backwards and eliminating one by one so that he never had the birth of action and therefore he never had any of this happening here anymore. He, he just jumped from however, wherever he stopped, he jumped into another position and he made another one of these start happening over here, but they were way out, not involving these anymore. And eventually he was only working with this. That's what he works with. And most of the time he does not crave, he laughs at himself because he knows the moment he feels like his craving is coming up, the best thing to do is laugh. Oh, it caught me. Ah, uh, look at that. It caught me and I missed. 
I have another married couple that used to pick on each other all the time and they started playing the craving game that I gave them and they would stand in the kitchen and start picking at each other and then they'd start to see who could catch who craving sooner and they'd, they'd say one for me, one for you, one for me and they'd play a game until they were just laughing crazy, laughing fun because it was all stupid picking on each other all the time, you know. Yeah, we were just doing that for fun. I said, Blake, I've been in the kitchen when you're doing that. It's not fun. <laughs> you know? So you you one thing Bhante says about all of this, and you all should keep this in mind. How do we measure your success at changing a habitual tendency? How do we do it? By the level of your sense of humor about this whole entire thing. <laughs> That's what it tells me. And I'm there, yeah, it's right. Because as soon as I'm caught, the moment I'm caught in, oh, you know, I start laughing. <laughs> and the moment you're angry, the, the one thing that's true, and you can test it with any client you have, the moment you feel angry, you need to start laughing that you just got caught by anger that just caught you, you know, and you have to start laughing. <laughs> 